What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November, wrapping this month up here in the next couple of days, heading into the month of December in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking talking about you guys and whether or not I think it could eventually recover here. We're also going to break down natural gas as well as another stock that I'm watching that's looking quite interesting. And this stock in particular, guys, they reported earnings a couple of days ago and since then the stock has gotten crushed. So I'm sure a lot of you guys could guess what that stock is, but again, we'll go over it here in a couple of minutes. But before we do, all I ask from you is to go down below and hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community and me personally on a day-to-day -day basis that link is down below in the description box, the Discord, and the Facebook. So let's get right into it, guys. Starting off here with the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX. Yet again, it seems like we're going to have another green day here. Currently up $5.18, up 0.16%. And if we zoom in a bit here to the one day, one minute to see some daily action, you guys can see we hit yet again another all-time high. And this close that we're seeing here is especially that we're breaking above the moving averages, this is looking quite bullish in my eyes. So we hit that all-time high, 31.41, and if we zoom out a bit to the 20-day, one-hour chart, you guys can see beautiful uptrend here, right? We pulled down a bit, we saw the healthy retracement, we consolidated for two, three days, then we saw the gap up over the weekend, and since then, beautiful higher high, and at this point, what could happen, right? Sure, the fact that we're closing pretty... Uh, you know, this is a pretty bullish close here. This could potentially run into tomorrow, especially if those futures open up green, right? If those futures open up green, we could be pushing maybe to another all-time high, right? Maybe we go up hypothetically to 3150. But think about it then at that point, you know, what's probably going to happen? We're going to see a retracement period again, similar to what we saw a couple of days ago and what we see every couple of days as the the S&P, um, what we typically see here as the S&P has been hitting all-time highs over the past couple of weeks. So if we do get to 3150, ultimately guys, we might pull down to that 50 SMA again, retest it for a higher low. And at that point, are we going to continue the uptrend? We have to wait and see. If we break that 50 SMA to the downside, we might correct even further down. But of course, we have to wait and see if that happens anyway in the first place to then really do our analysis from that point in time. So if we go to the Dow Jones and see what it's doing right now, guys, up 45 points, up 0.16%. And the Dow, just like the S&P, hit another all-time high today, guys. And the close is looking quite bullish double bottom breakout above the moving averages. I'm liking this from a bullish perspective, right? The all-time high today was at $28,129.74. And if we pull up that hourly chart, although there are a lot of trend lines here that I do apologize about, guys, I do have to clear this, but I'll do it probably tomorrow or another time. But you can see it either way. This is a beautiful uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. We're trending above moving average resistances. Um, you know, we're holding the EMA as a support. Everything is looking solid. So we could pop up even further here, but ultimately a healthy pull down will come just like it did a couple of days ago. Um, you know, maybe we pull down to that 50 SMA and uh, who knows guys, a lot of people think the markets could start selling off here towards the end of the year. Of course, we saw Ray Dalio saying big market uh, correction by March. So be careful guys. Don't think that this will continue continue forever, but in the short term here, um, it's bullish, right? We could pull down. If we hold it and pop up, it'll continue to be bullish. But again, be careful because who knows? Anything could happen in these markets, guys. We've seen it happen before. And, uh, you know, trade war stuff, if, that's, if that escalates, who knows? If stuff gets blown out of proportion, 
by the media and a lot of people start panicking a lot could go down in these markets so it's good now but just 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 be careful at the end of the day um, because who knows how long this is going to last so the nasdaq right now up 20 points up a quarter of a percent here and did we hit that all-time high today 84.22 was that today no i think it might have been yesterday um if we look on the five day five minute <clears throat> excuse me guys it was actually last night is that last Last night, yeah, it was actually last night the futures market hit 84.22, and uh, <clears throat> really since then we've been consolidating, holding the moving average as a support here on the five-day, five-minute. That's looking good. If we pull back to that hourly chart, we can see here, you know, we're breaking up. Everything's looking quite bullish. Bullish cross here, 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. So just like the S&P guys and the Dow, the Nasdaq is looking quite bullish right now so that's kind of the rundown on the markets today guys everything is looking good all-time highs pretty much across the board here in terms of the nasdaq the dow and the s p but in times like this again guys always be prepared for a potential downside right don't go crazy i'm not i'm not giving you financial advice because I'm not qualified to do that, but don't go crazy in my opinion, right? This is what I'm doing in terms of buying stocks here. I'm actually loading a bunch of cash right now because a lot of my long-term positions, believe it or not, they're overvalued. I'm not looking to buy here. If anything, I'm looking to trim profits. So at times like these, in my opinion, again, don't take this as advice. Do not take this as advice. You know, in my opinion, it's good to be really stockpiling cash in times like this because if another December of 2018 occurs and if you guys remember what happened about a year ago a year ago the markets fell about 20 25 percent and if you had cash at that point in time you could have capitalized on a lot of opportunities in that moment just think about it guys I was buying Apple stock then for about 150 140 160 bucks a share and right now those shares they're up like 60 70 percent so think about it. If I didn't have cash, you know, I couldn't be able to take advantage of that opportunity. So side rent is over. Let's get to what I did today in terms of my trades, guys. And let me know what you think about that. Are you holding cash? Are you really buying stocks heavily right now? I'd love to see and hear from you guys down below in that comment section. So what I did today, guys, I completely sold out of my Chipotle Mexican grill position earlier on in the day today. And this is one probably of my best stock uh, swing trades of this month. And in terms of a percentage percentage value, I believe it is. Because if you guys recall in yesterday's video when I talked about how I sold out of my initial position, that position, um, the, the, the initial sell that I uh, you know, put in was a 4% profit. I believe it was a 4% profit, right? I think I got in roughly 750s like we've been talking about over these past couple of weeks, right around this time period here. So from 750, I sold at about 780. You guys can see See, yep, about 4%, right? So the remaining shares, think about it, guys, from 750 up to where I sold this morning, those are up another 3% on top of that. So very, very solid trade here um, in Chipotle Mexican Grill. I ended up, honestly, guys, just selling out um, this morning. It might have been during this time period, not at the top. Um, it might have been around like 805, 806, 807. Ended up selling out because of this massive gap up. You you know, I was already up so much on the position and if you guys recall my initial plan it was to get out when it you know get out of a, of a, of a significant amount of the position at around 800 bucks and anything above that and close to the 830 level I'd just completely get out of and that's where we're where we're at now pretty much so that's kind of what I did in terms of a Chipotle Mexican grill another one that I'm swing trading is uh Shopify which I actually got in about a week or two ago and I've kind of uh, 
uh, haven't really mentioned it on the channel. I kind of forgot to mention it um, over these past couple of days, but you guys that followed the videos about 10 days ago, you remember uh, that I've been in Shopify here, I believe, since the 315 range, and this is one that I'm actually still holding, believe it or not, right? And this is actually a stock that I want to talk deeper into here, but in, but in a couple of minutes here. So we broke above 325, um, and this is actually giving the stock Shopify a lot more upside potential because you guys can see the next resistance here is at about 345 bucks. So you can see this thing is filling the gap quite quickly with these two bullish candlesticks here on the four hour chart. That is always a good sign. And it's really continuing to climb here heading into the close of the market. Very strong close for Shopify. So I didn't sell these shares. Um, you know, I'm going to just sit on them, probably sell them at about 340, 345. But we'll see. Maybe I'll trim profits tomorrow. But as of now, I'm simply holding. So that's really all I did today in terms of my trading, guys. I was actually eyeing up DGAS, which we'll kind of get into the uh, next segment of this video. I was eyeing up DGAS today, but a lot of the drop in UGAS came overnight pretty much right if you weren't in it from Monday night into Tuesday you really wouldn't have made a move uh, you know in terms of that degas play because you can see here most of the play came from the gap up into the market open right we opened at 135 you guys can see we kind of hovered there all day and we closed yesterday at around 126 so we pretty much gapped up eight to nine points and this is really because natural gas has been getting crushed guys right and we've been talking about this and breaking it down on the channel here over the past couple of days and really and really over the past couple of weeks so let's break it down even further based on today's action so slash ngf20 that's the ticker we click enter here and you guys can see what is going on right now today it was down two percent it's down two percent right now down five cents and you guys can see on the five day five minute chart kind of a shorter time frame the the past five days of trading this is a straight up downtrend on natural gas right the bears are in charge here we have a bearish cross the 50 sma crossing below the 180 sma this green line here crossing below the yellow line and really the 50 sma and the 180 sma guys these have been resistances over the past three four days of trading so if i want to see you guys go up if i want to see a breakout in natural gas the first thing i want to see is a break above these moving averages on the five day five minute then we'll work out to larger time frames this is how i typically do it so if we see a break there on the five day five minute We'll go to the two hour chart. And, 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 you know, in terms of the two hour chart, I'd want to break above 257 because I know a lot of you guys know on the four hour chart now, if we can look at it, 257 is a level where we double bottomed a couple days ago. Um, you know, in terms of this double bottom breakout, we can see that making that a very strong support. And we actually held it as a support a couple of weeks ago, really about a month ago, towards the end of October before we went on that match massive rally. So 257, that's kind of where I want to see it break out of and ultimately get back into the 260s. But before we do talk about um, that and get ahead of ourselves, guys, we need to focus on these smaller time frames and see that bullish breakout on natural gas before you guys could eventually recover, right? Because on a technical basis, that is what we need to see. And if we go to you guys right now, UGAZ is the ticker symbol. We need to see a break out of this 180 SMA for um, um, the trend, right? For the trend to turn bullish and ultimately a break above $13. So as of now, there's a lot of weakness towards natural gas. And through my research, and I talked about this thoroughly in yesterday's video, but through my research, guys, we're looking to see a withdrawal of about 60 billion cubic feet of natural gas this upcoming report, which is this Thursday, right? We're expected to see that, which is actually not a big withdrawal because the weather has been quite mild. We've been talking about this a lot on the channel as well. It's been warmer than expected, and honestly, it's supposed to be like that until the beginning of December 
as of right now. Sure, weather models change, but as of now, that is how it is. And that's kind of why we're seeing this weakness <clears throat> in you gas and this weakness in natural gas and D gas flying up. But the truth is, guys, we're not even in winter yet. So once we actually get into winter, I think this thing will eventually recover, right? Once we actually start getting some cold sweeps, real, real cold sweeps in the winter across the U.S. where it causes and strikes demand for that price to go up, obviously that is when we'll see natural gas and you gas recover. But the question is, when is that going to happen? And that's something that I cannot tell you. We just have to simply sit here and be patient and really just wait for the weather models and wait for these technical breaks to the upside on natural gas and you gas that I've been talking about here over the past couple of days. So really in the short term at this point, guys, yes, there's definitely going to be some more weakness or rather there's potential for more weakness due to the mild weather that we've been experiencing. But once once winter really kicks in and we get these cold sweeps, that's when I think natural gas and you gas will recover. But when will that happen? We don't know that quite yet. It could be in the next two weeks. It could take three, four weeks. But eventually, in my opinion, I think it will happen. So that's kind of the rundown right now, in my opinion, my thoughts um, on what I think of you gas and D gas right now and natural gas. I've kind of been on the sidelines, like I've been mentioning over these past couple of videos, guys, because they've been completely, completely volatile. So I'm waiting to see if you gas bottoms out eventually and sees that technical break before playing that. And until then, guys, I'll probably be on the sidelines because I don't want to start chasing D gas now because it's seen such a massive run. So I'm in this position where I'm in a tricky place and I'm sure a lot of you guys um, could understand that, right? So let's break down some other stocks and that one in particular that's been crushed. And that one is Home Depot, guys. They reported earnings, uh, I believe a couple of days ago, their EPS came in at $2.53 versus $2.52 expected. So they beat on EPS, but we where they really got crushed, guys, and why the stock fell is they missed revenue $27.22 billion versus $27.53 billion. And the same store, global growth, um, sales glo growth global was 3.6% versus the 4.7% expected. On top of that, they lowered their guidance, which you know, stocks, when, when, when companies do that, a lot of the time stocks end up selling off. Sometimes, you know, stocks don't, but a lot of the time they sell off when guidance is lowered. And you guys can see, you know, that coupled with the revenue miss and, and the slowing growth here, you know, in terms of these global sales, that's kind of what is bringing down Home Depot, right? So we got that massive dip. And whenever a blue chip, massive company like Home Depot goes on dip, guys uh, on a dip it's always worth watching and it's always worth pulling up a long-term chart and taking a look at what's kind of going on and this is beautiful here guys in terms of this uptrend right take a look 158 was the bottom about a year ago on home depot now we obviously hit an all-time high at 239 but the fact that we're pulling down here you know, this could open up an opportunity for us to buy into the weakness if this trend holds. This always corrects, guys. Over the past year, it's corrected multiple times, and each time it's held a higher low. So I think this spot on top of the trend line, right, on top of that 180 SMA, our size looking very overbought or rather oversold. I think this spot could be a dip buy where we could potentially make upwards of six, seven, eight percent, depending on how much Home Depot recovers. And again, it's one of those blue chip companies, guys. I definitely think this thing will recover. And you can see, even though it's gotten crushed over the past couple of days, this is slowly looking like a bottom on the five day, five minute, right? We kind of bottomed at 215 and now we're starting to climb up. We're seeing a bullish cross and we had a pretty solid close today up 1%. So this is definitely one I'm looking to potentially add to my swing um, portfolio here over these next couple of days. So another one I want to talk about is NEO. We talked about this one. Oh my goodness. What is this here? 
We talked about Neo in yesterday's video, and this one ended up rallying like crazy today, guys. Up 11% here, up 24 cents. Very, very strong rally here in Neo. I personally did not take advantage of it, um, you know, although I did talk about it in yesterday's video. But tomorrow, I'm probably going to look to enter on the dip, maybe a play off of that EMA. But, you know, really the basis of this trade here, um, you know, is the fact that we broke to two dollars here that's a bullish move in my opinion and uh, it could fill the gap up to 240 which happened about a couple of weeks ago um you know when we ran up all the way to 250 so that's looking like it's happening again but now we have to wait for a pull down in my opinion maybe a play off of the ema shopify again i traded it um well i'm actually still in the trade um but i'm swing trading shopify which is killing it here um six percent today Hey guys, very very strong day for Shopify, and honestly, I said Chipotle was my uh, my my highest swing trade of the month in terms of percent. Now Shopify might take the cake there because it's up six percent just today, and I'm in about uh, three fifteen, so I'm probably up about seven percent. But anyway, Shopify is looking good here, guys. If we pull up that four hour chart, you'll be able to see that 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 zone that I was talking about, right between three twenty five and about 343 if we break above 345 here guys this thing could definitely run up to 366 bucks right that's the next resistance that i'm kind of looking at here and honestly if we get a pull down that's going to be an attractive entry point um in my opinion because that's likely before we do test 345 guys because our size overbought this thing's very very hot right now um maybe it cools off before running up but hey, if it runs up and blows through 345, this thing could be going to 360 before we know it, guys. Because Shopify, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, literally, guys, I mentioned this, right? These stocks, they're growth stocks. They report earnings that are poor. Market forgets about it in a week or two, and then all of a sudden the stock's flying again. And literally, it is flying again as I am recording this video. So Shopify is definitely worth watching here. Amazon, amazing Zon, AMZN. This is another one that seems like it's found a temporary bottom at around 1700 bucks, and it's getting to the level where it could see a breakout here at about 1800 bucks. If we break 1800 guys, based on the supports and resistances that I have laid out here, 1850 is the next level that we could be getting to. And that gives Amazon here a potential of around 2 to 3% to the upside which I think is really really good. So Amazon here AMZN that's the last one that we're going to talk about. And honestly guys, a lot of these stocks have potential, especially Amazon and uh what was the other one? Shopify. I'm really liking these two as well as Chipotle Mexican Grill. Believe it or not, I sold out again like I mentioned completely, but I still see potential in this thing, especially if it cools off, maybe for a rally up to 830 and of course maybe even 860 again so let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts about that what stocks are you watching what etfs are you watching i'd love to know so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching don't forget to leave that like don't forget to subscribe if you want to see further content for me and don't forget to check the strive smart discord chat the facebook group and the merch all of those are linked down below thanks again for watching peace out